ladies and gentlemen I want to um, I'm going to talk about manganese and I would like to start with an event that occurred 107 years ago and that was the sinking of the Titanic now subsequent to that uh, the Titanic wreck was discovered and they've been able to retrieve some of the equipment and steel or whatever from the from the Titanic now we all believe that the Titanic was sunk because of the iceberg and I think it's more complicated than that. Uh, once they have retrieved the steel from the hull of the Titanic, it was analyzed, they discovered that they haven't used sufficient amounts of manganese in the production of the steel. So as you may know, you, it's impossible to produce steel without the addition of manganese. Small quantities, between 4 and 10 kilograms per ton. But if you have less than that, then the steel becomes very brittle, and that's why that... Um, Iceberg has such a big impact on, 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 on the ship. If a modern ship were to hit the same iceberg, probably nothing will happen. Now, it's really a real pity because manganese is a pretty abundant uh, element on Earth. Uh, it's the 12th most, uh, most abundant element in the uh, Earth crust, although in economically viable quantities, it only really occurs in four uh, parts of the world in Carajas, in the middle of Brazil, in the middle of the, the Amazon, then in Gabon, then on an island that is northeast of Darwin in Australia, and then of course the Northern Cape, or the Kalahari Basin. I think somebody mentioned it before, but the Kalahari Basin is the single biggest deposit of any mineral on Earth. Uh, and depending on which geologist you believe, we have between 85 and 93 percent of the world's reserves. So, so there is guesstimate there are reserves available for the next 5,000 years. So, manganese ore is not a scarce commodity. However, you cannot turn manganese or use manganese ore in steel production. You first have to produce an alloy. In a submerged electric arc furnace. Um, and we had a very successful uh, alloy industry in South Africa, competitive, far advanced, the best technology in the world, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe early 90s as well. And what's left at the moment? Virtually nothing. They've all been transplanted to Malaysia, or the island called Sarawak where there's the availability of cheap electricity guaranteed for 20 years. So, uh, in South Africa, I think there's one smelter left. The second biggest smelter in the world, Met Alloys, outside Meyerton, was closed. Um, the smelters at um, uh, Durban has been closed. So there's one producer of alloys still available, and I don't, you know, with the rate at which ESCOM is pushing up electricity prices, it's a matter of time before they also close. So that's why I say we had a manuf advanced manufacturing capacity in South Africa, competitive and good, and that has been killed by the fact that we don't have cheap electricity, or even electricity available. At some stage, not long, when we started with the first round of blackouts, ESCOM, in fact, paid the smelters not to produce so that they have available uh, power for the rest of the country. Well, that's stopped now. So we had uh, advanced manufacturing capacity, and I don't think... And uh, we also need, by the way, we need more relaxed labor laws. Labor laws, cheap electricity, uh, and I don't think we're ever going to see that again. Thank you very much.